Welcome to another edition of Crime Time with Duty Ron and Ed Wallace. We are retired New York City police detectives with 20 plus years of law enforcement. And in guys and girls, if you like all things true crime related from a police perspective, please consider subscribing, hitting the notification bell so you will get all things Duty Ron and Ed when we go live or upload another video. And tonight's video is about a missing person case from 2016. Hi, Sean Curry. A um, man in his 20s goes missing on January 31st of 2016, and his parents report him missing. The rest of it is history, and we'll cover that in tonight's live stream. We have a perpetrator in custody and uh, his remains recovered, courtesy of Equisearch Midwest and the local law enforcement authorities. Guys, I want to say a special thank you on behalf of myself and Ed to our Patreon supporters, the channel members. All of the folks who subscribe and positively interact in all of these live streams, you guys are unbelievable and a great, great uh, asset to any true crime community. And I know Ed feels the same way as I do. Ed is checking in from Missouri. And you, as you can see, he's in his hotel room. He picked up his underwear and socks. Everything is clean in the background. Ed, welcome. Uh, welcome tonight. How you doing? Great, great. Good evening, everyone. Glad to be here. Yeah, Ed, I got to tell you, you know, you and I, last time we went live was Saturday night, and I have so many messages on dutyron.com and to my private email, when are you guys going live again? And, uh, you know, everybody has to realize Ed has a successful business that he runs. I have a full-time job. Um, so we do do a lot of things, but in the midst of all of it, we look for new cases. We look for uh, new angles on old cases that we've covered. So we do a lot of stuff behind the scenes. So just everyone's just got to kind of be a little patient with us. But um, yeah, we took a little bit of a break and I gave you some little uploads and some videos, uh, some lives from my vehicle. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me say hello to people in the chat real quick to the moderators. I greatly appreciate you to the replay viewers. Ed and I are uh, just we're just thrilled when we see the replay viewers come on. Carol Loving Alaska, thank you for joining. Dawn Marie, moderator, great friend. Nancy Eileen, Princess Mitchell, Princess Michelle, uh, her screen name is Princess Mitch. Josh is here. Um, great to have everybody join in. And Facebook, Twitter, live, and LinkedIn live. Thank you to everyone coming in. So I'm going to read you. This case has um, not give it, been given any I would say, no, I couldn't find one piece of media about our victim. Hi, Sean. Sh uh, Hi, Sean Curry um, was uh, a male black who went missing from his home um, January 31st of 2016. Um, the case kind of just didn't really move anywhere. Uh, they recovered his vehicle just a short time later, um, uh, 2016, on uh, the 31st of January. And then in February, uh, right around February 8th, uh, an investigator recovered his vehicle um, with um, a lot of evidence in it. But before I get into that, I want to introduce two very important people. And you guys know and love them. Uh, Dave Rader, he is the director of operations director of Equisearch Midwest, the Ohio chapter, and Twyla Cisco, the search coordinator. I got them hanging out and I can't let them sit in the in the green room too long because otherwise they'll start exchanging cocktails. So I got to bring them on right away. So Dave, thank you for joining. How are you, buddy? And hello, Twyla. How are you? Good. How are Good, you? Ron. Hey, pleasure. It's, it's always a pleasure and an honor to, um, you know, as I mean, as the honorary law enforcement liaison, I keep in touch with you guys. We sometimes have these little breakdowns of communication because you guys are so busy. But um, Twyla, you've had the lead on this case since um, two years ago. Do you want to just tell the audience just a little bit about the history and how you know you got started with this case? I know this one's near and dear to you because it was the first one that you took on as you came on to uh, Midwest, Miss Midwest Equisearch. It was uh, the chief investigator at the time, which is he's with the FBI now in the state of Alabama. Um, he called us in. It was my it was my first 
uh, search or case as a search coordinator. And we had all these new Alabama members. And so he called us in and I went down there. I was nervous as all get out, but I went in there and done everything that I could possibly do to help at the time. And every time after that, if something came up, the chief investigator would call and we'd go back down there and we've been out there in the heat and we've cried and his family's been there with us every single time that we've went. And I told him when we first went that we would never give up and we never gave up. And the investigator that was on the case, he he's, he's a godsend. He's called on us every single time, even to come in in the, in the final days and help get this uh, family some closure. Yeah. Uh, Dave, I know that you and I have been speaking a little bit about this case, and there's been a flurry of activity uh, within the last two weeks. Um, you want to talk a little bit about uh, what EquiSearch uh, Midwest, how you guys got involved, and how this all went down with your recent uh, activity down in Alabama? Well, again, um, you know, the chief investigator, uh, he, he's, he's always been on speed dial. Uh, he's helped me out uh, several different th things with other cases that I've had. Uh, or that we've had, and, and and like I said, and like Twyla said, he's a godsend. I mean, the man is just uh, as nice as the day is long. So he, um, when uh, actually I was uh, in a in, in on another case down in Tennessee, when I got the phone call from him, he was on his way. Is that they had found uh, the skull that uh, that Saturday evening? He was on his way down to. Uh, to the crime scene itself, and, and he kept us in, in, in touch every step of the way. Uh, so then we, we spoke on Sunday or Monday, and we made a game plan for us. He wanted us to come back down uh, to, to recover more of Haishan or who, who we believe is Haishan. It's, it's not been positively identified yet. Uh, we're, we're making the assumption because of, uh, of, of the proximity of where uh, this, uh, the, the remains were found. So, uh, and from there it was, um, it was boots on the ground. We, myself and Twyla, uh, you know, we got a game plan together. We figured out how we were going to attack this. We even brought in, uh, people from down in Texas. Uh, Tim sent us six people from Texas. Tim Miller, uh, right? Tim Miller, correct. And, yeah. um, so we, we actually utilize people from here and also from Texas on this. And, and, and the, the, the people from Texas n never have been uh, on something of, of this magnitude as far as on a, on a human remains uh, search. So this was a new experience for them. And, and uh, together again, uh, this was a very rough terrain, um, very wooded, very thick, very viney. Um, it wasn't a kudzu, but um, it was just nasty. But uh, it, it as Twyla can attest, uh, it was a team effort. Yeah, and this is the um, this is this missing person poster off of uh, or post off of the Charlie Project uh, dot org. So it says missing since uh, January thirty first, twenty sixteen. Missing from Thomasville, Alabama, um, and it gives you just a bit of his pedigree. And this is the vehicle. That was recovered. Um, it's um, it's been alleged by the investigators and by the prosecutor, and uh, perpetrator is now in custody. And this is him down here in the little screen down in the bottom right. Um, the perpetrator is Tremaine Nickerson, 26, of Pine Hill, Alabama. It's alleged that he shot and killed um, uh, Mr. Curry inside his vehicle, and then took his vehicle and drove his uh, then at that time uh, girlfriend or acquaintance. Uh, around in that said vehicle with all of his um, blood and remains uh, inside that vehicle, which was subsequently uh, recovered on February 8th of 2016. So now they never had a body, but they had all of his uh, blood evidence and uh, things of that nature. So that's where Ed Wallace comes in. Ed, you want to talk just a little bit about uh, how these investigators may have recovered evidence in regards to this case? Yeah, apparently um, the vehicle was filled with the blood and tissue of the decedent. And um, there were some attempts apparently also of, uh, of trying to clean up that crime scene. And they were able to uh, get enough of the material or document enough of the material and then get it, uh, get it checked by DNA to match the missing person. 
that they were able to use this to um, declare uh, the missing person as a decedent, as um, as being dead. And then from that, uh, they were able to um, get an indictment on the uh, suspect uh, who they believed um, committed this crime. It was an amazing uh, forensic work. Um, and then couple that with now this recent uh, find um, of the, the um, po possible remains of the victim. Um, hopefully we'll get some idea on the, on the odontology uh, of the uh, victim and, and or DNA. And then this case will be wrapped up with a bow, if you will, yeah. and brought to court. And we'll hold this uh, suspect re accountable for his actions. Hey, now, Ed, I want to ask, uh, I'm just going to read a little bit of this uh, to the uh, audience, and I want to ask you a quick question about evidence here. So this is the perpetrator. This is the piece of garbage, Termaine Nickerson, uh, Wilcox County, courtesy of the Wilcox County District Attorney. Uh, it says he's a 26-year-old, and now, don't forget, this is from January 10th of 2020. Uh, this is when he was collared. He was arrested. Uh, a 26-year-old West Alabama man is charged with capital murder. Now, capital murder is because he committed a felony with uh, taking a, uh, this guy's vehicle at, alleged at gunpoint and then committing a, another felony on top of that. I, I believe that's how you come up with the capital punishment crime in the state of Alabama. At least that was my um, the research that I did on the um, in the statute. Uh, so in the 2016 disappearance of the of an acquaintance whose body has never been found. Uh, again, this is from 2020. Termaine uh, Nickerson of Pine Hill uh, in Wilcox County was formally charged on Friday with capital murder in the slaying of Sean Curry, who vanished almost four years ago. So now for my listening audience, for those of you who we look at cases like um, uh, Summer Wells, of course, we don't have any type of recovery. The, the boys from California, Oren and Orson West, this is four years now fast forward to this year it's just a, a month or so shy of a six-year anniversary and then we have this perpetrator in custody over a year well close to a year now wilcox county district attorney michael jackson said uh the 28 year old curry who lives in thomasville disappeared on uh, january of 2016 and has long been presumed dead the warrant against nickerson said the victim was shot to death during the theft of his vehicle. And this is the victim right here. And this is uh, Hyshawn Curry. Uh, Curry's missing BMW was found in Wilcox County about a week after he disappeared. Jackson said Nickerson had been driving Curry's vehicle around with blood inside the BMW. The investigation is led by the Clark County Sheriff's Office, spanned three counties, the Clark County in Alabama, Wilcox County, and uh, Marengo. Uh, Jackson said the investigation is still ongoing and Nickerson is being held without bail in the Wilcox County Jail. Um, Ed, my question to you is, um, inside that vehicle, you have you have blood evidence, you have um, gunfire, as we call it. I know you don't like me to say splatter, spatter. Mm -hmm. yeah, spatter is the proper word. I call it splatter for the listening audience blood spatter yes blood spatter what's what could be recovered in, by these investigators in 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 uh inside that vehicle when we're talking about blood spatter okay so here's the thing um when when blood uh is spattered in this case uh say <laughs> it's a uh, ballistics involved um when that do you have what's called a forward spatter and back spatter associated with bullet wound entrances and bullet wound exits okay now if there is just an entrance and no exit then what you'll have is called back spatter and so when you depart energy into a liquid okay the amount of energy you put in the more energy you put into the liquid the smaller the droplets are going to be and they're going to project back towards the firearm and towards the direction the shot came from um and so potentially depending on where the victim was seated in the vehicle at the time that they were shot um there would be spatter that would go back towards the direction of the um the, where the shot came from so there could be potentially um blood spatter on the shooter the gun, in the barrel of the gun, um, then 
you would um, again look at where they were seated, and then you would have spatter maybe on the dashboard, on the roof liner, uh, the car door. It just depends on the position at the time of shot, where the person was shot, and the position and so forth. Um, but now the thing about this is when spatter is projected backwards, when it goes into fabric, like might be on the headliner, okay, it projects through the entire weave of the fabric, okay? Uh, and the same thing on carpets and things of that nature. But so you can, you can call it spatter, or in this case, versus contact transfer. If you, if you had like blood on your hand and then you wiped across the surface, well, that blood is only going to remain on the top of the fibers of the surface. It's not going to project through the um, the entire weave or feet or fibers of that material. So that that could you know, and the size of the stains itself. Usually, um, gunshot uh, spatter has these very tiny sub millimeter uh, stains projected back towards the direction of the um, the gun. Now, if there's an exit as well, then um, you'll get forward spatter coming out of the exit and it follows the bullet. Right. And, and the, sa the same principles will apply. Thank you for that detailed uh, description. And you know what, Ed, you got a great way of, um, you know, you know, you're a teacher, but you have a great way of explaining in layman's term for the audience. And I'm, I'm sure everyone understood completely. So when the, when the, when the blood goes into the fabric, it is absorbed within the whole layers of that fabric is what you were saying, right? It, it, it projects through the entire weave. But if it was just wiped on the surface, what's called a contact transfer, it's only going to sit on the top of the fibers. It won't go through the whole weave. And, and is it because of the ballistic, um, uh, the, the, the splash out or however you, we want to call it, the, yeah, it, the velocity uh, sends it like high. It's almost like being pressure washed onto the surface, sort of speak. Yeah, it's about the energy, and and it's being projected in little tiny spheres, right, uh, through the air, and then into the into the weave, right. Mm -hmm. uh, a question comes in from our good friend Sherilyn Schofner. Schof How much blood can the human body lose before death is absolute? And this is a good question because in this particular case, um, it was said by the prosecutor and investigators that the amount of blood that was recovered from inside that car, no human could uh, survive. Do you have an answer for, the, for this question? Uh, I would defer that to the, to the pathologist. Uh, you know, we, I, I don't even want to venture uh, yeah. down that road. For, that's out of my uh, area of expertise. Um, let me add Dave back in. Uh, Dave, again, I, I just want to highlight the good of what um, EquiSearch Midwest is done on this case. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about um, the cooperation that you received and that Twyla received? I'll let you go first, Dave, and then I'll let Twyla go. Um, do you want to talk just a little bit about um, the cooperation that you received from uh, the Clark uh, County Sheriff's Office and adjoining counties, Dave? Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's been... Um probably one of the best um, experiences that I've had since I've been doing this. I mean, uh, it, it's, it's almost like a hand in glove run. Um, not only was this guy law enforcement and brought us in, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, we broke bread with this man. He, he took us out to dinner. We, uh, as, as this case went on and I was involved in it, the sheriff invited us back to his house uh, for a party to, uh, that he was having uh, for the hospitality that we, you know, that that we received down there. The Southern hospitality is is like no other. So I mean, the 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 law enforcement end of this, um, <clears throat> like Twilight was saying, is that this man now is not only you know worked for the Clark County, but now he's down in the Jackson Police uh, and the FBI, and 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 he trusts us so much that. Uh, the team, the FBI team reached out to him and said, Hey, do you, do you need us? And, and he sat there and said, no, EquiSearch has this. <laughs> so that was a huge compliment to, uh, to us. And, and, it, and, and again, I can't, I, I can't take that, uh, you know, that because, you, you know, who set this all up was Twyla, um, setting this whole, uh, rapport up, 
uh, because of this was her first one and she took the bull by the horns and and this is where we are today with this man so i'll i'll defer that back to uh twyla and she can uh kind of tell you how it how it goes from there now twyla i know you don't like the spotlight but you are the search coordinator and this was your um this was your search um you showed me that your last uh travel back down into southern alabama you on that search day did over 10 miles of searching just yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, when you guys are searching, you're searching with the authorities there, right? I mean, you, you have, uh, you're not, you, I mean, you are on your own, but you're basically being overseen by the law enforcement because that's how, that's how we get approval to go out and do these things. We don't just wander around and take it upon ourselves. Um, talk about your relationship, Ron, uh, the investigator, uh, I think, I don't want to botch his last name because he's in the green room. He's going to be joining us in a few. Uh, Baguette, is it, is it? Did I say yeah. that right? Oh, good. Oh, good. Whew. You know, as a New Yorker, I don't want to piss off a Southern guy. You, know, <laughs> you don't want to mess with him, I'm telling you. They'll whoop my ass. <laughs> uh, talk about the relationship you have with Ron and with his organization and, and the law enforcement down there. I'm sure it just wasn't just him. It had to have been other people helping out. Uh, just let the audience, this is what makes EquiSearch great. And this is what makes law enforcement great when they can bond together and come to a common, we have a common goal to achieve. And that is to, for them, close a case and bring closure to a family and get justice. And for you guys, it's lost is not alone, right? That's right. So um, if you want, I, I tried to take a little bit of the heat away from you. You know, Dave's got a fire burning in the background there. Uh, just let us know about the relationship that you had with these folks down there. Um, for, well, Ron, I, I, I think very, very highly of Ron. And I look up to Ron like I look up to Dave and I look up to you. Um, when I introduced Ron to the Texas members that came out to help us with this last one, I introduced him as the president of the United States. There's Ron right there. I wish he's on the screen so I could actually tell him, you know, how I truly feel about him. He's one of the best guys you will ever meet. And I honestly feel like he should run for the president of the United States. There's Ron. Guess what? There is Ron. Hey, one of the best guys I ever. Ron, I want to say thank you so much. Uh, and, and I don't know if I should call you Detective Ron, Investigator Ron, but I'm going to call you Ron because I'm a Ron. So welcome. That's good this enough. This is my partner, Ed Wallace. He's a retired first grade uh, crime scene detective. And you know these two uh, guys and gals, oh, yeah. right? Here. Um, so, Ron, I, I just want the listening audience to know, you just give them a little bit of background on you. We don't want to talk about the case because you are ultimately going to have to testify and put this piece of shit behind bars. Excuse my language, but you're going to uh, make sure that the key gets thrown away on this guy. So we're not going to get into any aspects of the case uh, for uh, the benefit of the wheels of justice. But just give our listening audience a little bit of your background. Uh, I know you've got 20 years. <laughs> uh, I do, Ron. I've been doing this for 20 years. I started at the uh, Sheriff's Department in Clark County, Alabama, back in 2001. And probably didn't do but two years of patrol, went in investigations, was, went to, uh, was promoted to chief investigator in about 2006. And maintain that position until I decided to venture on to something else in this past January. Uh, I went and joined Jackson, Alabama Police Department, which is still in my county. Uh, had an offer to head up a major crimes unit there and for our circuit, which is three counties in the circuit. Wow. So uh, I kind of went from the uh, frying pan into the fire, so to speak. <laughs> because I just double my work, but I enjoy it and I enjoy helping other agencies uh, and mostly, you know, major crimes and, and it's been a success since we started it. You know, you yeah. and I have the opportunity today and uh, I have a little bit of an upper hand on my co-host, Ed. Uh, we had the opportunity to talk on the phone a couple of times today and it was a pleasure and an honor, uh, you know, from brother to brother, you know, you're still active, I'm retired, but you know, that brotherhood, that bond never, that we, we never lose that no matter what until we take our last breath. Absolutely. Um, but what I wanted to say to the audience is that you, um, because of this case, and again, we don't want to talk about any of the particulars. I don't want you to talk about any bits of what you did, but we know that you did a hell of a job and you did. Uh, uh, you you make law enforcement and and the public proud 
for the work that you what you told me what you did was just beyond uh and over and above so um you you mentioned to me that you honed the skill and you became certified in uh different electronic uh surveillance and and tracking device of, of cellular stuff just talk a little bit about that not pertaining to this case obviously but just right. uh where, where this case well, took you i can tell you uh all around the same time i started honing a lot of skills i was in the midst of training i'm, I'm and now a uh, latent print examiner i was going through that as long with the digital forensics and then i started in the cellular data technology side of it right after this case started and I'm going to tell you, as we talked earlier, if it hadn't have been for you for the cellular data, I mean, we wouldn't be sitting here talking about it today uh, in, in this fashion. And uh, it's just technology and a new skill that and I give credit my sheriff I had at the time. He's resi uh, he resigned back first part of the year, uh, has moved on to other things. But he's been my he was my sheriff for the last, I'd say, 11 years. And if I said, Sheriff, I want to go to uh, London for training, he'll say, well, get on the phone in order to get your plane tickets. <laughs> so he provided me with the means and, and, and uh, of course, the back end to, to get all this training that I've, I've been through. And, and uh, I'm, I'm getting closer to the end of my career than I was. So I still love to learn stuff. And every opportunity I get, I want to get out there and learn new technologies and, and uh, you know, new ways to, to try to catch these bad guys. Yeah. Good for you, Ron. It's, it's good to have a boss that backs you up like that. <laughs> it was. It's very good. And I got one now where I'm at now. He's just as good. So. All right. Yeah. Well, when you get when you get the good ones, those are the ones you got to hold on to. Um, Melissa Absolutely. Hollins uh, sent in a message, Ron. She says, you guys are awesome. When you talk about Wilcox County, Alabama, you're talking rural. I know the family right. is so grateful for the closure that you all have given mm -hmm. them. Amen to that. Amen to that. And I'm yes. going to bring Dave uh, back on and Twyla. Now we got like, this is like, uh, this is, this is like uh, the family. Uh, it's almost like Brady Bunch. <laughs> Brady Bunch but That's this right. Family, this is the family unit. Um, <laughs> you know, again, Ronnie, before you came on, we were talking about the great work and the bond that um, law enforcement has with EquiSearch and not only just EquiSearch Midwest, the Texas chapter with Tim Miller, all of his folks, Gene Robinson, I want you to just let the audience, listening audience know how important is that uh, when you have a smaller department, like what your, you know, your departments and you get into the rural areas, you might have two or three or 10 right. deputies or whatever. How important it is it to get the outside help? It is. I'm telling you, it's unbelievable that when I met these guys and I've, I've worked with other, other search, uh, you know, uh, agencies in the past and then i'm not knocking them they've done a great job uh and i can't I, I remember one day somebody sent me a uh a screenshot of texas x search and said go on google and watch his videos and it was uh mr tim on there and that's what led me to getting in touch with dave and get in touch with these guys without them guys and without their team and the and, and the volunteers that we had that, that come on i'm telling you we probably would never have found anything you know we're always lucky somebody has stumbled up on something in the woods, but there's always more to it. And there's always more you need to do. And we just don't have the manpower and we don't have, we do have a lot, a lot of the, before then we had a lot of the family of this guy that was will, willing and able to get out and, and search. Uh, we did when he first went missing, we had numerous searches with volunteers of the, with the family and church members. And, uh, but nothing since I've met Dave and Twyla in Texas extra search, it's just I've been unbelievable every time they've come up. <clears throat> yeah, you know, the little time that I've been working with them, you know, it's maybe six months or so. Um, yes. I've, I've seen the vigor and the 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 way they go about uh, conducting themselves, dotting their I's, crossing their T's, making sure everything's safe, making sure their people are safe. Hey, Twyla or Dave, would you want to take um, – I'm going to make this full screen, but we're uh, the audience can hear us. They just can't see us. This is a full screen layout. Um, this was on Ron's Facebook, but I think Twyla sent this to me. Let me know who these people are. The audience know who we're looking at here. Dave, I see Goldilocks right here on the right. <laughs> That's uh, who's, 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 Dave Raider right there in front of us. 
Okay. And then this other one beside Dave uh, with the hat on to the right of my screen with the class. Yes. He's from Texas. And then you'll go over behind Dave, the lady there with the glasses down below, right his shoulder up. Uh, those two ladies there from Arkansas. And then the girl behind her right there. Yes, that's Marcy. She does our sonar. She's excellent mapping. She's been in the organization for about 10 years or longer. And then the guy that's behind Marcy is another guy from Texas. And then right there where your arrow is to the left of Marcy, that's Ryan. He's from Indiana. And then the girl down below Ryan is Emily and she's in Kentucky. And then the one with the hat there, that's Genova. On Summer's case, she had the Goldie Lock braids on their side with the gun she's, on her head. You she's, remember she's, her? Yeah, she's the pistol packing mama. Yeah, that's her. <laughs> and then I, I, that little skinny one there, I'm not sure who she is, but the other one beside her. <laughs> that, somebody, somebody brought their kid here. Who's this? Yeah, little yeah. A child <laughs> snuck in there. I was riding on Ron's back over here, uh, Chief Ron here. And then the lady beside me, she's from Texas. And then the guy beside her, he's from Texas. And then the one back there with the thing on his back, he's from Texas. And then the young men there in the and then the, black, the president of the United States. They referred to, they refer to uh, Mr. Baguette as the uh, president of the United States. Well, you know what? Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, that. This is a. Uh, this is what searching for the missing is all about, and this is what helping, you know, as civilians. They, you know, Dave and Twyla, they're not commissioned law enforcement. They never were, but they are assisting uh, law enforcement in in the mission statement. And Ed and I know uh, from working in the largest police department in the United States, uh, we never have to lean on the public for assistance, but we do lean on the public for leads and assistance in a different way. Right. And I think every organization and every every investigation uh, has some outside help from civilians. And Ron, I know we can't get into it, but you and I had a conversation about a female who uh, gave uh, some great information on this case. We're not going to mention anything like that. But this mm -hmm. is uh, some of the common denominators in many <coughs> cases. Now, um, you know, people always say, how can I help? What can I do to help? You know, if you see something, say something. And and, and that really is, uh, you know, we started that after September 11th here in New York. But it sounds cliche and it sounds kind of funny, but it really is the truth. If you see something that's not right in your neighborhood and you um, just keep it to yourself, now you got a situation where if something you could have done something, now you're going to sit there and say, oh, I should have, could have, would have. So it's always important to pick up that phone. Police never... I mean, as much as sometimes we think, oh, we call, the police, we call the police and they're like, ah, you know, that's crazy. That's cockamamie. But no lead is too uh, outrageous and no lead can um, be discounted, yeah. you know, and I feel strongly about that. So, and can I interrupt? And, and, yeah, sure. This man right here, Ron, over here, I've never seen nobody work like him. It's like he never stops working. And we've conducted searches on Saturdays and maybe even a Sunday. And he wasn't even scheduled to work. And he was out there with us from, if we said 6 a.m., he was there. And he, I've never seen nobody work like him. Like, he never stops. <laughs> and it's not just him that he's focusing on. Ma. He helps everybody around him. Well, that, that's what my wife agrees wholeheartedly with you. <laughs> they, used, they used to say in New York, a good cop never gets cold, wet, hungry, or tired. And I would turn around and say to them, yeah, the great ones do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's a good one. Uh, Twyla, I'm going to put a couple of pictures to highlight this situation. Again, we're, we're talking about Haishan, uh, um, Haishan Curry. He was missing from uh Alabama on January 31st, 2016. We now have a perpetrator in custody charged with capital murder. I, I want Twyla to just set up some of these photos because I want to show these photographs. This is from the search. Just let the listening audience know what we're looking at here. We're going to go full screen so everybody's off camera, uh, but people can hear you. So this says before, and it looks like a bunch of, um, well, I'll let you do it, Twyla. You tell us what we're looking at here. So we were in an area um, down there for 
uh, hi, Sean, you know, helping Ron. And this was in an area down behind those bushes. There is kudzu and trees and just stuff that was impassable. You could not get through there whatsoever. And this was before when we got there. And when we got there in this particular area, there was this great big, huge yellow, some kind of machine that was clearing some trees in the area. Well, Mr. Raider here had a great idea about going over and asking this guy for help. He came over there and he cleared this area. And in the picture, it looks small, but it, it's a decent size area. He went over there and this guy came over here and cleared all that so that we could get down there in there and search that. And I'm telling you, it didn't take him no time. That's a, <laughs> oh, wait, 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 I want to do the after first. <laughs> yeah, that, that's after he cleared it with that big old machine, he was cutting them trees down like two, three at a time. I've never seen nothing done like that in my life. I don't know after if you can hear me, but it was actually a... Uh, Go ahead, Ron. I was just saying that it was actually a uh, tree cutter, a big tree cutter. They just grab a hold of the trees and cut them. He just went down through there with that thing spinning and cut it all down. No, Ron, yeah, it was Ron, crazy. Ron, I got to correct you. It, it's a forensic tree cutter. Oh, boy. That, that, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's some kind of tree cutter. I'll tell you that. that. It costs more money now that you added the word forensic to it. Here, there it is. That's yeah. it there. Is this the tree cutter? Yeah. And you that's see, it, that picture yeah. actually makes it look small because, like, if Dave was to stand right there by that tire, he, he I don't even think his head would come to the top of that tire. And I'm telling you, it was huge. I see Dave Raider's uh, pickup truck there, search team. Yeah. yeah. Nice. That's the white beauty. I see it. Yeah. Um, so this is what cleared that area for you guys mm -hmm. to, to do That's the it. searching. And we didn't we didn't have to – we didn't really waste no time We long enough. You know, it didn't take long at all. Not I wouldn't say it would take no more than 10 minutes. That man was back there clearing that stuff like it was no tomorrow. It blew mm -hmm. my mind. And he wasn't a part of your initial plans. He was just happened no. to be there and you approached him and he, and he out of the goodness of his heart, he helped you. So yes. kudos, kudos to that man uh, and his uh, yeah. machine. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. He stopped what he was doing and came over there. He sure did. Yeah. And I was like, wow. It blew me a lot. Example of a civilian helping out in a search for someone who's been missing going on almost six years. And this is just two weeks ago, right? No, this was one of the searches previous to the one we were at two weeks ago. Okay. All right. So it, it doesn't pretty matter. Pretty much well the same area. Yeah. yeah. Same area. What do we yeah. got here, Twyla? What am I looking at? Um, well, Dave Ryder. No, no. See, see, what happened was his family actually came up on that snake, and it was in March, and, it, and it's a rattlesnake, and uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Goldilocks there what wanted us that? to go back and get it. Shh, it's a snake. But he wanted us to go back over there and get that thing to for him so he could have it because he'd never seen one in person. But me and Ron got to see it, didn't we, Ron? Yeah, absolutely. It I was, saw it was, as I was running. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and who, and, definitely uh, he was running yep uh-huh it was it was something crazy so uh, this one is gonna be like this one's gonna be hard but i'm gonna go ahead because this was the actual day that we got to go and, um that's what it looked like when we went over there with ron uh -huh. that morning um all that thick stuff there and you can see the yellow tape back there where me and Dave went and taped off these areas for our people to get in there and get down and see what we could do to, to, you know, and the family was there. So it was very, very hard, but the family was in very good spirits. And that one of the brothers actually looked at me that morning and he hugged me and he said, when I first met you, you told me that y'all would never give up and y'all would be here every time that Ron called and y'all have been. He says, if it wasn't for you guys and Ron, he said, we wouldn't be standing here doing what we're doing today. And that's from the yeah. family. Yeah, absolutely. That's beautiful. Uh, you know, that's what we, that we, we do this job uh, and you guys do your job to bring people home. And like, like we always say, lost is not alone. That's worth its weight in gold right there to hear that from a family member. That's uh, right. So this, so this and, is the and, and the family was there with you all the time. 
Yes, every single one. As a matter of fact, the brother that told me what I just said was the one that came up on that rattlesnake that day. And he was right yeah. there. Every, I've got pictures that I didn't want to put out of there out of respect for him, but I've got pictures where he was literally on that line with every single search. And this was the after picture of Dave went in with these big, huge scissors. What do you call them, Dave? Loppers. Yeah. So Dave went in there. That was, all, all, cleared that by, out. That was, his that, was that was all cleared by hand. Yeah. Um, so this whole area that we were looking at before, that was very dense. Um, yeah, you, you can see Dave him. back there with them things there. He had his work cut out for him that day. Yep. And so, so, so the process is, guys, just so just so people understand it, uh, your your listeners, is what you do is you 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 literally assess the area. You you see where things were found, and then you you what I do is I crime scene tape it off in sectors. And then you go in, you assess it, then you go ahead and you get all of the debris that's out of the way uh, for your searchers. So, so basically I'm going in and I'm cutting down um, sticker bushes, I'm cutting down vines, I'm cutting down small trees. Because it makes it easier for your, your, your second wave to come in and take and clear all of that out. And then your third wave is to rake it and then your fourth wave is to sit there and literally... Uh, go on the ground, hands and knees, and sift through it. Mm -hmm. So there's a process to this, and it's a very long process, um, but it's it's very thorough, and 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 that's the best way that I know that you know forensically to to preserve things is if you get everything out of its way, out of everybody's way, they can concentrate on the smallest of bones. So that's kind of where we were as far as on when we started this. Uh, there was all kinds of sticker bushes. The vines were nasty, uh, the, the, the trees. So you got all of that out of the way so they can concentrate more of business at hand. And that's why uh, I think we were successful, especially after the, the times that it, the, the time that has lapsed um, from from High Sean uh, missing. And was this the actual area that some of the remains were recovered? And I, and I know we're not going to go deeper into that, but um, was this area that you roped off here? That that was so that, that was, was that was leading up to uh, remains were found in and around that general area. So what we do is is we you expand that circle, Ron. So so basically, you we know where, and I would say what was found at that point in time. But we, you, you, you process it, it and, and again, you assess the area. And, and there's a Sardi book that's out that, that shows animal scatter and in, in, in direction of, of, of how bones get scattered by what animals. And that's what we take into consideration as far as when we're, we're going ahead and mapping all of this out and extensively. So basically how we did this was is we were on our hands and knees for the first half of the, of the, um, of, of the day. And then what we did was uh, after lunch, we literally went ahead and did line searching. And that's where we found more of the substantial bones is, is through the, 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 uh, the line searching that we did. But I went through before the line search, I literally went through and was getting the, the vines out of their way. So when they did their line search, they could just concentrate on what's in front of them. <coughs> and, and, and that's how we were successful in, and, and what we were doing. I got to tell Ron, you. Hey, Duty Ron. Yes, ma'am. If you want to put that picture up there of those little bones that I showed you in the dirt, those are animal bones. It'll kind of give an idea of how far we went down to the dirt and what things look like. Um, it was the one that right there. That's how far down we get down on our hands and knees, like Dave says. And this was maybe a half an inch down into the dirt. And we just cleared all the dirt around around that but we go all the way down to the dirt in in situations like this and uh this these were uh animal bones right uh twyla yes yes and does that remind you of something that we uh talked about with dr murray marks oh right? yeah. yeah absolutely absolutely in fact i i had cases where um uh, a private detective was hired by a family and uh, they said they found the, their their loved ones remains and when we went out to the scene unfortunately
Yeah, I don't know what happened there at the end. We lost a little bit of the audio, but we ha I got most of that. Um, Jennifer Nobles is in the chat. She's a good friend of ours from Bakersfield, California. And she asks a question for Twyla, who is the uh, search coordinator. Did drones help in this search? And coincidentally, uh, what a great question that is, Jen, because I asked um, uh, Ron about drones on our phone conversation. Now, we're not going to get into that phone conversation, but Twyla, I'll let you, um, I'll let you answer that. Um, we, on this particular search, did not bring drones in. Ron, however, did have drones out there for this, maybe the day or so before, you know, doing the work that he needs to do. But Ron used drones on his end, but we did not on our end. Hey, I want to say something uh, to the Ron, I, I, Go ahead, Ron. I, I, not that she said that I, and we had talked earlier on the phone. I believe it was the day before we took our drone drone from, uh, from Jackson police department out there and mainly just to try to get some aerial views of, of the area. And actually, uh, it, we got some pretty good photographs and locations that led us in a good place to begin the search when David and, and Twyla got there. Oh, okay. So then, yeah, we, so then the whirly bird did go up. The drone did go up a, yes. a little bit here to help in reconnaissance, probably and just looking at the terrain, looking at what we got. Uh, and that's always uh, helpful. Um, I wanted to say something too, uh, you know, again, with, with cases like this, uh, people, the, the folks in the chat, there's close to 500 people at one point in the chat here. Um, you know, Ron, a lot of people say in the smaller departments that there, there's a lot of corruption, there's a lot of this, there's a lot of that, uh, and they talk about cases being thrown onto the wayside. Now, without going obviously into the details, I know you put in from our conversation quite a bit of time in the in, in this case, but talk about some of the other cases. Is there cases that smaller departments just throw to the wayside, or do you guys go balls to the walls on all of these cases? You know. <clears throat> I've heard uh, even some of the some of the agencies close to my area. I mean, there's been people that say things like that about agencies, and they probably said it about our agencies. But you know, I can say for the most part, my 20 years, everybody that I work with from numerous agencies, uh, you know, are, are, have worked just as hard on their cases, and not just you know put them to the side. And the fortunate thing most of us have. Where versus a, a a big bigger city or area is you know some of these bigger agencies as soon as they get started on a, on a homicide they got one or two more or more coming in so you know it's they can't concentrate on that one case for a long period of time which fortunately we can uh, right. we don't have that many in our area I mean we have more than we want to I've worked. In 20 years, I know, and this may not be a lot to most folks, but I've worked over 100 homicides. Uh, but we've been fortunate enough to just almost like the good Lord's led us to, you know, get to that point where, okay, we've wrapped this one up. Now it's time to start the other one, you know, but they're not piling on top of let each me, other. Let me just, and if I could say something, you know, as far as this department that, that Ron, when I first met him, he was with Clark County. And, and, and again, the, the sheriff over there, literally invited us over to his house and i said this before to to break bread and and he was having a, a family get together and and he brought us in and i'll never forget the man sat there and pulled me to the side and he says dave and, and ron is is always if i've ever called him and 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 asked him to do a favor uh the man has never sat there and told me no or i'll get to it or uh anything like that but when his sheriff the one that, that that's left uh, left the department now. He sat there and pulled me to the side, and he says, "Dave, he says if you ever need him up in wherever that you are, he says I will put him on a plane and get him to you the next day." So this is the kind of dedication that not only that department had, but they also had uh, the faith in what Ron does and, and what he brings to the table. And again, I, I mean, the man is just a wealth, but, but, um, there's no ego that's first and foremost. And number two is, is that he's down to earth. Um, you know, we've had dinners together. We've met his wife. Um, it, it's, it's like family. I know that, uh, Twyla has, has went to his house and, uh, ate crawfish and, 
and, and <laughs> shows grits, which I'll <laughs> never do. So his wife, Penny, will have to come <laughs> on here one day too because she is the bomb. Time out. What what is grits? I never had grits. Oh, don't well, don't well, even go there. Let me, let me I'll, that's all I ask. If I can grits. just get Dave to eat grits. Right. You know, in, in uh, something are those instant grits? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. No. Good old homemade the searches whatever. that Dave didn't go on yeah. when I went and Dave wasn't able to go, me and Ron would like, we ought to take pictures of these grits and send them to Dave and we would do it every single time. <laughs> no. is, this, is, this, is this episode about to turn into my cousin Vinny? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, takes 22 Are we minutes. talking about Phil Grimaldi? <laughs> yeah. 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 The laws of physics do not apply to the grits in your kitchen? <laughs> That's right. All right. So I, I, I took some notes here. Okay. Um, again, we have a case that's coming up on six years uh, come January of 2022. This man, uh, the perpetrator alleged um, who has committed this crime, has been in custody for almost a year now. Thanks to the great work of this officer right here, this investigator, Ron Baguette. And I tip my cap to him as an NYPD retired detective. I know Ed does the same thing, and so does Dave and Twyla. This is what good law enforcement, this is the face of good law enforcement across our country. And I'm going solo with him because I want everybody to see this. This is a man who dedicates his time, takes time away from his family, goes above and beyond, and goes above and beyond not only with the victims and their families, but with the people who help him get to justice. Uh, I don't think I could have said that any better. I don't even know where that came from, but that came from the heart. It came from the heart. And, uh, and it, it's I didn't even it. look at him as if he was some kind of law enforcement or anything like that from the day we met him all the way up until two weeks ago. Almost like he, he was was our family. When we met him, it's just like, oh, hey, brother, where you been at? You know, something like that. It, right. it, it's just strange, but it's great. All right. Who, Ed, were you going to say something? Yeah, yeah. He, he, you know, it's, it's the tenacity. You never give up. You, you push forward, you always you overturn every stone, leave not, no stone unturned. And, you know, because I couldn't live with myself. And I know I see it in Ron. I hear what, 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 the way he works and what he does. Um, and it's a matter of pride, too. OK. And no one likes to have a cold case. No, uh, no, no one likes no. to miss a piece of evidence. Uh, um, so uh, I applaud you, Ron. Great job. And just remember, Ron, there's only two types of cops. Detectives and everybody that wants to be a detective. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Bingo. Yahtzee. Yeah. Don't pass go. Uh, <laughs> we have a couple more things on it before we wrap it up because we're all close. To, we're getting close to the hour. We got another seven minutes. Um, Twilight, there was more stuff that you sent me. Um, I'm going to put a picture on. Um, this was looks like it was from the search. I just want you to give the audience a little look at what we're looking at here. So, um, this, I think this was from the family. Every searcher, every search we've done for my brother, they've been here with at least 20 to 30 yeah. people ready to help. Hashtag professional searchers. Now, uh, Ronnie, can you tell me who that was from family-wise? Was it his brother? I believe it's going to be his brother. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's a beautiful message right there and a picture posted. Um, Twyla, you want to take this? Yes, that is a bracelet that I left there. I don't know. Um, all of a sudden, we were sitting there discussing, like, in the middle of the woods, we had to sit down and just gather our thoughts real quick and discuss some stuff. And I yelled up the hill. I was like, hey, Dave, do you got a bracelet in your truck? And he was like, okay. So he brings a bracelet back. And I felt in my heart that that's what I needed to do with that bracelet. So I left that there. You know, and when I put that there, I felt so much peace. The family seen it. They hugged me and like, that's amazing. But that is one of our bracelets because he was not alone and we was not ever going to give up on him ever. That brings me to the next point, And that was beautiful, Twyla. And I, I, I purposely wanted to show that. I'm going to go full screen with me because I want to show the bracelet. for. Um, so, oops, upside down. So it says lost is not alone. And then on the other side, it says Equisearch Midwest. 
Now, I have these available on dutyron.com as a fundraiser. Um, I encourage you guys to go over and purchase these uh, wristbands because every single penny of the $10 for each one of these, now it's a fundraiser, but every single penny of this $10 goes to Dave Rader and his great organization. We've already sent $1,500 from just these wristbands from you, the great folks, the great civilians. If you want to help these folks search for the missing, get on to over to dutyron.com and pick yourself up five or one of these. If you can only afford one, I have them in bundles of five and 10, but if you can only afford one, Send me a message on dutyron.com that you can only afford one or two, and I'll gladly send you one or two. Uh, Dave, any any comments about our fundraiser for uh, these wristbands? I, it was my idea, and Ed sanctioned it with me. You want to talk a little bit about these? Before yeah, you, before I mean, Dave, before you go, I'm so sorry, sir. I want to remember, or I'll forget, uh, if they go onto our website, we do have merchandise because I remember we talked about that before, and we're supposed to keep your fans updated about that. But if you go to our website, there is some shirts and bracelets and other different things on there that people may be interested in. And I didn't mean to interrupt, but I wanted to say that before I forgot. Perfect. Yeah, there's a lot of great merch on there, but Definitely go over first to Duron.com because they have these wristbands on Equisearch's website, but it's not part of the fundraiser. This is from Crime Time with Duron and all of the folks who subscribe to this community. This is a way for us to help Equisearch out. Uh, Dave, you want to talk a little bit about it uh, and how successful this program has been for you guys? I mean, you you and Josh came up with this. Uh, you, you approached me, and 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 I I can't thank you enough. I can't thank your listeners enough. Um, it, it's been absolutely uh, overwhelming um, the the amount that they have given us, and it has helped us tremendously to be able to go down. Um, you know, just to kind of give you an idea of just going down for the two days. And the amount of people that we had going down there between gas and 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 hotels, it was well over three thousand dollars. So all of all of the donations that you are raising for us, Ron, is 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 a tremendous burden lifted off of us in order for us to be able to go down to Ron and, and these families and to and to help these families out and and to help Ron out with his. Uh, um, you know, with his department. So it's a hand in glove. And, and without those donations, it, it makes it quite difficult to, for us to travel to, uh, to fulfill our, our, uh, uh, what people are asking from us. So I, I appreciate everything that you have done. Uh, I appreciate every listener. So thank you. Yes. And, and it, it's, again, it's a testimony to the great community that we have here. These folks back and support local law enforcement that are doing good jobs. You know, I'm the first to come live and talk about a situation if there's some uh, rogue police officer. And it's a very minute, the percentage of good way, way outweighs the percentage of bad. And like, I, like Ron said, and like I've said, I was working in a, I worked in the largest police department in the United States, and I've never seen one bit of corruption thank god I, I always prayed that every day was going to be a good day and i was going to get home to my family but i never saw and i never worked with one corrupt police officer or detective and i guess i'm honored uh i'm blessed uh, i'm uh, you know uh but I, I have to say you know we're out there risking our lives uh day in and day out for complete strangers and it's a thankless job and it's not a job that we go into to become rich that's for sure so no. um <laughs> You know, um, I want to continue to show just a couple more of these pictures because I think it's important that we get this out there. Twyla, you want to set up what this next one is, and then we're going to wrap it up. Uh, looks like, go ahead. I'll that was the morning of, you know, we taped off the areas, and this was the members going down to start the search that morning. You know, it was kind of down just a little bit, um, but that's the starting of the morning after we did our brief briefing got to the actual location we prayed before we pray before every every search and we try to pray at the end of the day too um but that was them going in to start of the morning all right and we saw this one we saw this one there's the crew again that's a little bit of a higher res picture of the of the search crew 
Uh, who? Uh, not that one. He well, wasn't, not that one. I don't know how you got that one. <laughs> the next one's a newbie. I won't put that one on. Um, right. Okay, I'm just kidding. Um, this is more of the just depicting the brush that you guys had there, right? Right. That's what it looked like before, and you know, as we were starting in the morning, as we got into these areas, and then by the end of the day, that was just completely down to the dirt. These right here was my tracks by myself for the day, and it told me that I had 10.54 something miles worth of steps just in that small particular area that morning. Or that um, day, I should say. That is unbelievable. There's the distance, 10.54 miles. Uh, I, at first, I thought it was like an echo, like an echo sketch uh, kind of thing, that, you know, a little thing that kids would play around yeah. with. I was, like, I was like, what the hell is this? Uh, but she true. sent it to me. Yeah, and that's that's what she did that day. Um, it's just amazing, the amount of coverage. It's kind of hard to really see it. This is the best one right here, I think. Yeah. It shows all of her walking tracks and going back. And and I'm sure that was everybody that was there that day. Every single one of them, Dave, everybody, because we were all right there together. Every single one of us. Wow. Um, any, there was a couple of videos. Oh, here we go. So can I show these? Am I allowed to show these? Yeah. Oh, yes. Here's something from the family again, I think. No, uh, that's from Ron. Oh, that is Ron. Okay. So yeah, that's Ron. what I put on my Facebook page. All right. Do you mind if I read this, Ron? Sure. Go ahead. Okay. This comes from Ron, the investigator, lead investigator on this case here for Hyshawn uh, Curry. He says, I would like to thank a lot of great people for their hard work this weekend and a lot of other weekends over the past few years. David Rader, uh, he called you by your official. I always just say, hey, Dave. Uh, <laughs> Dave you. And Twyla Cisco, all and all of the searchers from Texas EquiSearch and Midwest EquiSearch. Without them, I don't know what we would have done. Lieutenant Brian Clark and Lieutenant jo Jonathan Downey, my crew with the Jackson Police Department, First Judicial Circuit Major Crimes Unit, Sheriff Ben Bates, that's the guy who just retired, right? Uh, no, and, he's actually the sheriff where we were at. Okay, and Marengo County Sheriff's Department, Sheriff Dwayne Smith and Investigator Donnie Floyd, Clark County Sheriff's Department, uh, Marengo County Fire and Rescue Agencies, and Reverend Curry and all of his family. Great job, everyone. And what a beautiful photo. And um, yes. a great tribute to the... The, 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 the guy the in the middle, Ron, is uh, Reverend Curry, which is Hashan's father. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. This gentleman right here? And like, yes. yeah, let me tell you that man, every time that man showed, he was there every single time and he made sure that we were taken care of. He brought us breakfast. Oh, yeah. He made sure he went and got lunch. He brought us drinks. Ron, he was there every single time. And every time I seen that uh, man, he had some yeah. food giving it to us. That's and beautiful. over the course, of the last almost six years, he's never hardly missed a week without calling me. And when I say that, you know, a lot of people in law enforcement get phone calls from family members and they're usually fussing or wanting to know what's going on with the case. This man called me and wanted to know if I went fishing that morning. We talked about, you know, where he's been and what he's doing. And and he's never called me and said, hey, what have you done on my son's case? And it's somewhere in our conversation, I would, I would start t telling him what I've done, but he's never called and asked. He just called to be a friend. It's a beautiful thing. And you'll continue to be friends with him probably for the lifetime. Oh, absolutely. Um, yes. And that's, that's what's the, that's one of the great values of the, the, the job that we do. We get to help people at their worst. We get to see people at their worst and try to make the best of a situation by doing whatever we can to bring justice for them. And I think and here's, and here's the other thing too, Ron, just as a, uh, as a side note to this is that because that hi, Sean, has been found when a service is performed for him we will at least have somebody as a representative from equisearch at that service out of due respect absolutely, absolutely. that's beautiful the relief on this family's face i'm telling you it was like angels sitting there glowing it, it was it was a very peaceful moment for ron for the family and for everybody that's been involved with this case since day one I love it. I love everything that you guys do. I love my fellow brothers and sisters in blue, and you guys are my brothers and sisters as well. 
Let me show this quick video. Um, it looks like the tractor at work, I think. Or is that Dave running through the forest? What's yes, happening? Dave running through the forest. Ron had to go hog time down. <laughs> Holy sweet mother of Jesus. Look at that. All right, so that's that big tractor at work, right? Yep, that's yep. it. Um, next one is just another another photo of the tractor. I'm afraid of what's coming up next. <laughs> yeah. oh, <God. laughs> this young lady, oh. What did she do? That was on Look the one where we were in that water. Uh, I was <laughs> in the creek. <laughs> yes. When uh, I came out of there, there was my, my hair was glued to my. I was just. It was just a long day, huh, Ryan? Twy was like she get literally me out was this. diving. <laughs> she was diving in the creek. Get, get me out of this bucky creek. There's crocodiles in here. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh. Let me see what else we got here. I think there was one more video of girl power at work. Hold on. I think it's this next one. Yes. Let's go full screen with this. Is that your beautiful daughter there, Um Oh, yeah, she is. She's in here. That's one of them. Yep. <laughs> All right. So, what Every time what, I come back, she uh, hugs me and she cries and she's like, I miss you, mama. Oh, yeah, that was that was some crafty ideas we had there that day, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. So, can you tell everybody what, what the heck you guys are doing here? So, we had some um, cadaver dogs over there, and we had to get a little boat, and we went down off in there, and up here where you see all these trees and stuff, so that's where Ron and was standing, and we was trying to dig up underneath there to see what was under there, and unfortunately, me being the smallest one, I get stuck up under there. At one point, you couldn't even see me because I had to literally squat down and go up under this embankment, and by the end of the day... I was frozen, soaking wet, and that was the day that the sheriff invited us over to his place for dinner. Yeah. That was a long day there, buddy. I got to ask one question. Uh, there was I see three women in the water and no men. What, yeah. what, what, what happened there? Is it just well, somebody had to run the camera. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Wow. I got to put that back on. Let's just take another look at this full screen of girl power at work. I mean... You guys are badasses. Hey, Ron, you know, I don't know about there, but down here in the South, we got a saying, somebody's got to be able to go back and tell the story. <laughs> yeah, and that's exactly what y'all did up there. At one point, I think they was even laughing because we was so covered in mud. I'm telling you, I have mud in my ears, my nose. And then there's another video somewhere where one of, there's another girl on our team that had a shovel digging that out and they're they're up there asking me do you need some snorkels do you want some goggles <laughs> i'm like geez really can i play the audio to this Is there anything funny i don't even it? know what it says but if you'd like to you can for a minute there i thought they were noodling <laughs> You can hear Ron talking in the background. They were actually talking about <laughs> something with the battery or putting our one of our phones uh, into a waterproof case to see. We were trying to figure out a way to see under there, and we couldn't. So I, I was like, up, I, wound up, I wound up with a uh, GoPro camera. Oh, All right. Okay. Yeah. Did you hear what I said earlier? No, I didn't, Ed. Uh, I thought they were. I thought they were noodling. Oh. <laughs> it felt like. Yeah, you know what the noodling is. Here's another. Yeah, I know what that is. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, we I don't think I don't think uh, Duty Ron knows what it is. No, I don't know what noodling is. I, I, is, that, is that something I can eat? Well, if they catch it, yes, fish, yeah. Actually, <laughs> there we go. All right, I'm gonna go full screen with this. This is another version, and it looks like there's a crocodile in the background, but it's a big ass log. But let's take a peek at this. Yeah. So there's the girl I was just telling you about. You see, she that's a girl, and she's digging that dirt out for me to get under this embankment. And I'm like, can one of y'all do it? Oh no, you're the smallest. We can dig a small little hole for you to go under there. And I'm telling you, it was at least from my from my elbow down to my fingertips. That's how far 
I went under and then my head went completely up underneath that embankment and there was worms dropping everywhere. When I got to the sheriff's house to change clothes, there was worms in my pants. It was cold. It was just crazy. Wow. I'm going to, I'm going to put the audio to this, see if there's anything comical out of this. Be careful what you do. <laughs> These are the girls at work. God bless. God bless. I got to know Trudy in there. Trudy was like, just hold your nose and go underwater. And I said, do you want to do this? And then I was like, just leave me alone. Just let me do this. Yeah. Thank you. Well, it's over an hour now, so we're going to wrap it up. Uh, I want to just start by saying uh, thank you again to uh, Ron Baguette for taking out the time. Uh, he's a busy guy. Uh, and thank you for the work that you've done on this case. We look forward to following this case to its completion to a, a guilty verdict a trial. Um, I, I can't say enough good and thanks to you and, and your department and everybody who has been there to, to help you out. Ed, you got any uh, any thoughts for the uh, audience? No, I just uh, I admire their perseverance. Uh, great work on the uh, EquiSearch and, and Detective Ron. Great work. Uh, all the accolades will be deserved. Awesome. Thank you. Dave? Dave, anything? You, you know, I, I, I'm i very blessed, um, you know, through tragedy. Something always positive comes out of the tragedy. And, and Ron has been a, a godsend. And just look at the team that we have assembled just since we've met Ron. Um, yeah. it, it's just been insane. I, I, mean, I mean, it has just absolutely been insane. Um, we'll continue to be uh, there for you. Uh, and for these families, and, and I tip my hat to you, not only as law enforcement and, and the respect that you have shown up, and hopefully we have done the same, uh, but you you are you are more than just a man behind the badge. You are, you are truly a friend, my friend. That's right. And we formed, a, as I mentioned earlier, uh, a major crimes unit for our circuit in this, uh, the three counties in our circuit. And what y'all don't know is that if you look at the members of it, y'all are on there. So <laughs> you are a part of our major crimes unit, you guys. That is insane. Awesome, wow. Do they, get, do they get a badge and gun to go with that or no? <laughs> well, we're we going to have to talk about that later. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll, talk about that off we'll talk about that off camera. Yeah. Hey, if you don't mind, uh, Twyla, I'm going to get, I'm going to end it with you, but I want to just go to the chat. If you guys don't mind, if anybody has any questions, and as long as it's not pertaining to um, evidence or anything that's got to do with prosecution of the perpetrator uh, who committed the crime against uh, or allegedly commit the crime against uh, Haishan Curry, if you want, uh, I'll just scan the chat real quickly. Uh, Voices for uh, Voice for Hope says, Ron, your humility is amazing. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, I, 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 I second that. I second that. Uh, Julia uh, for Justice says, inspirational uh, i think the uh, all of the audience and all the folks who sat through this hour and 13 minutes have been pretty much blown away by the good that is um exhibited here and this is just one case out of so many that um this investigator that myself that ed and that uh twyla and dave have been out on we're looking at uh, possibilities of doing all different kinds of things in the future in 2022 the sky's the limit and um with the help of uh, you know volunteers and folks that send contributions to equisearch midwest and uh the great folks who search for the missing uh, i i say that's the money well spent and um you know orin and orson west our boys in california we've been out there to do some drone uh assistance we have not forgotten them. Maya Miliette, she's still outstanding. And there's hundreds, there's pot potentially thousands of people still out there. We can't uh, possibly be in that many places at once, but we definitely do whatever is asked of us through law enforcement and through the families with searching. Um, I don't think there's a, a case that Dave's ever really turned down uh, that I know of. I mean, I'm sure that, you know, these cases all um, weigh heavy on him. And, and I know from conversations that they do. 
but let me just scan the chat real quick. Um, Ron, Ron, if I may jump in. Yeah, sure. So I, I, we saw a couple of questions about how they found this location. And we don't want to give that information away because then we'd be telling the bad guys one of our techniques uh, and methods that we use. And we don't want to give that information out. So uh, it's not we're ignoring your question. We're just holding our cards close to the vest so the bad guys don't figure out how we did this and how they get around it. And Thank just you. say, uh, Ron, just to follow up with that, uh, without giving anything away, we we searched this location for a reason. We was there several times, and it's because we had evidence that led us there. And again, we can't give it you know give it all away, but there there we were we just didn't pick that place out of out of the hat. Absolutely, Ron. Yeah. Law enforcement goes to these places uh, based on uh, where the evidence takes them, and. Again, that's all we can say. Um, uh, it's very important that people, that regular folks, the common, regular good civilians understand that law enforcement is not in the business to try to uh, torture people without uh, with not giving evidence out or not giving information out. But we hold it close so we can get that successful prosecution to get to the end where the jury says guilty. Um, and um, that's, you know, that's, our one main goal and until that happens it's in you know in the hands of the prosecution but you know you don't want to give anybody um a defense attorney now joe murray i know he's looming that's our good friend he's a def criminal defense attorney <laughs> if he was on here he'd be like listening with both ears and then saying taking notes mm -hmm. so you know we don't want we don't want to get into that because we want to have um you know we want to seal the deal so that's the that's the bottom line but I want to say thank you to everybody who has positively interacted in this uh, audience here and the people who sent super chats. You guys are uh, just fantastic part of this community. Um, Mama She sends in a $10 super chat and says, Hadi Dave is my hero. I, I think that's the general consensus of the yeah. night. His golden box and his yeah. gun deal. <laughs> Dave is a heartthrob of all the women across America. But don't forget, he is a, a real life superhero and i'm not saying that because there's a <laughs> super chat up to with a bunch of hearts let me take that off because dave starts to blush uh <laughs> dave is a superhero he dedicates his life his time uh, along with twyla and along with all of the team and uh i can't say enough good i mean i'm i'm just sounding like a broken record here but i just want to say um really thank you to everybody all across the board and uh, on behalf of EquiSearch Midwest, uh, Ron, uh, your department, the NYPD, all, all of the folks here in the chat, we can't thank you guys enough for everything that you've done and continue to do uh, going forward. I want you to stay safe and uh, go out there and kick some butt. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, guys, I'm going to say good night. As I always end all of these live streams, God bless the world. God bless the United States of America. And God bless each and every one of us here in the chat and all victims of crime and their families across the globe. They need us now more than ever. So please, guys, get out there and support and support and support. Good night from New York City. Talk to you guys soon. Thank you to all my special guests. And hang around, guests, because we'll talk afterwards when we're done. Peace and love from Duty Ron. Thank you for joining, and we'll see you on the next one.